welcome to another learning session. My name is Mbiayang Ignatius Chopke, your physics teacher, lower seat. Before we go into our lesson of today, we have to look at the correction of the assignment we had. And the question went thus. Using equation 1 and equation 2, show that the distance covered can also be written as what we are seeing on the board. From V equals U plus 80, which is our equation 1 that we had in the previous class, we can make U the subject of the formula. And substituting that into the equation for S, we have it as seen below. Correction of the second assignment. A car starts from rest and accelerates at 10 meters per second square for 3 seconds. What is the maximum speed it attains? Initial speed equals 0 because the object was from 0. A equals 10 meters per second square and T equals 3. Using this equation 1 that we know, if we substitute that, then that is the answer we are expected to have. Now we move to our lesson of today, motion under gravity. This is how the plan of our work is going to look like. Objectives, prerequisite, puzzling problems, learning activities, summary, and finally, assignments. Objectives of the, this lesson. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to use equations of motion under gravity to solve problems. You should be able to use the equations of uniformly accelerated linear motion to describe an experiment to determine the value of acceleration due to gravity by method of free fall. You should equally be able to describe the motion of objects accurately when they undergo free fall. The knowledge you are supposed to have before coming into this lesson, the prerequisite knowledge, you should be able to state equations of motion of uniformly accelerated bodies. Have the ability to describe motion of objects and also do some calculations by determining unknowns like simple linear equations. Test of prerequisite. Write down the equations of uniformly accelerated linear motion. Response to our test prerequisite. These are the equations we have. We have had these in the previous lesson and I expect each and every one of us to be acquainted and familiar with this. Problem. A boy sees a ripe mango on a tree and decides to cut the mango by using a stone he picked on the ground. And after projecting the stone, he succeeded in pulling off the mango. When the mango landed on the ground, his friend Richard saw it falling and pondered how he could calculate the velocity of the mango and the stone. How will you help Richard calculate these quantities? If you were Richard's friend, how will you help him calculate these quantities? First, we use here, the equations or the motion of gravity, equations of motion under gravity, since we are talking about falling objects. Now, looking at motion of motion under gravity, we in other words, we call it motion of free fall or maybe free fall motion of bodies. It is a common experience we all know that when an object is thrown upward, it will rise and then later on comes back to the or falls back to the ground. 
it is something we all know. When this object is thrown up, what happens actually? It experiences a retardation. The speed reduces as the object moves up. We have seen that in our previous lesson. It experiences a retardation due to the gravitational attraction of the Earth. So the Earth is trying to pull the object to itself. That is why the speed reduces, which tends to pull the object downward. This object will thus gradually lose speed as it moves upward until it comes to rest. A brief rest, what we call a small short rest before starting to fall. As it falls, its speed gradually increases again because of acceleration due to gravity because it is moving closer to the earth in the direction where the earth is actually pulling it. At this stage, the object is falling freely under the action of gravity. It means that it is only the earth that applies a force on it. No other objects or no other external bodies applies a force on that body. So it falls freely. The acceleration of the free fall due to gravity is the force of attraction. We know that acceleration is force per unit mass. The value of G varies on the surface of the Earth because the Earth is not a perfect sphere, rather elliptical in shape. So the Earth is not something perfect. It is elliptical. That is why at certain points, G will vary and at, compared to other points. Also, the Earth rotates about. That is one of the reasons to tell us to justify the fact that G varies is that the Earth also rotates about its polar axis. And thirdly, when the object is moving upward, its acceleration is minus g, because we consider the Earth as our reference point. So if the Earth is considered as a reference point, in physics we usually call it inertia reference point, inertia frame of reference. When we talk of an inertial frame of reference, it means our reference is considered to be the Earth. Inertial frame of reference means the Earth being the point of consideration where every other movement is taking place with respect to. Because it is motion in opposite direction to the gravitational attraction on the bodies, we said when the object is moving upward, its acceleration is minus g because its motion is in the opposite direction to the gravitational attraction on the body offered by the Earth. When the object moves downward, the acceleration is plus g, because the motion is in the same direction as the direction of the gravitational attraction of the Earth on that body. Note, the equations of motion for a body moving under gravity are obtained by replacing S and H. Remember that we just did something on equations of uniformly accelerated motion. And we had these equations here with S and A representing displacement or distance and the acceleration. In this equations of motion under the gravity under gravity we are simply going to just replace this s and a by h and g as we see here with h and g where h stands for the height of the object from a reference point which is the earth if that is our point of consideration in a given question and g will just represent acceleration due to gravity which could have a positive or a negative value depending on the initial, the initial motion of the, or the starting point of that particular object. Now, if we replace that from our equations, we see that V, which is the first equation of motion that we had, could be given as V equal to U plus or minus GT, depending on the motion of the object. If it is going against 
gravity or it is going in the direction of gravity. Secondly, we have this height, which is equal to ut plus or minus half gt squared. And finally, we have v squared equals to plus or minus 2gh. We use the negative sign when the motion is upward and positive when it is downward. So when an object is moving upward, the sign of g, a will be equal to minus g because it is going against the reference, the inertial reference frame, which is the head that I just made mention of. And then when a body is released from a height above the ground, assuming that you are standing on top of a story building and then you hold an object and release it, at that particular point, we said at that maximum height, the initial velocity zero, the initial velocity u is equal to zero. So each time you release an object from a height above the earth, the initial velocity u will be equal to zero. And when an object is thrown upward, it's like you take a ball and you throw upward, or maybe you want to like uh, use something like, uh, you take a ball and then you throw it vertically upward, it goes and then comes back. So at that point, when you throw an object vertically upward, by the time it reaches, it reaches a maximum point, the final velocity is equal to zero. So what do we see? That there is a, a change between u and v at the top. U is when you project an object up, U is equal to zero. Why V starts with U is equal to zero? Why at the point down where maybe initially if you want to instead project an object upward, U which is maximum at the bottom will act like, will be, uh, sorry, U which is maximum at the bottom will be like V which is at the top. So U at the top is zero and V when projecting an object, V at the top is zero when you project an object from down, going up. And at that highest point, U2 is so equal to zero when an object leaves a particular point up and it is coming down. So it has its maximum velocity when it hits the ground. Sometimes we don't even use the word hit the ground like hitting the ground because from the law of conservation of energy, if that object hits the ground, the tendency is that they, they will be energy converted and some of the energy might be lost in the form of heat and sound. So the best way to even describe this is when it is just about to touch the ground, just about to hit the ground, at that point, we assume that the, the potential energy portion of it is almost zero because H is turning towards zero. And at that point, V might be, is maximum. So just about hitting the ground. Now, we look at an exercise. A ball is released from a height above the ground such that it takes a time greater than five seconds to reach the ground. What is the velocity after five seconds? So a ball is released from a height above the ground such that it takes a time greater than five seconds to reach the ground. What is its velocity after five seconds? We have just seen that when an object is projected from a height or maybe allowed to fall from a height, the initial velocity is equal to zero. And since it is moving towards the earth, G is considered positive. And the time it takes, what are we saying? The question says that it takes a time greater than, which means that even after five seconds, the object will still be in air. It will still be in air. And if we are studying the, if we are answering this particular question, it means the velocity we are getting is the velocity the object will have at a time of five seconds, not the maximum speed because it has not yet, it, we were not told that it is about, maybe just about hitting the ground. Now, V equals U plus GT. If we substitute that very well, then we come out with the velocity given as 
49 meters per second. Exercise 2. If an object has to be projected vertically upward so that it reaches a height of 30 meters. If you have to project an object so that it reaches a height of 30 meters. What should be the speed of projection? This one now you are projecting an object from down so that it attains a height of 30 meters. And how much time will it take to cover this distance? If you look at the question very well and you try to write down, to write down the quantities that have been given and those that are to be determined, then you should have something like this. The height that has been given to us is 30 meters. The object is going above, is going away from the earth. So projected or maybe thrown upwards. So G there obviously would be negative. That's minus 9.8 meters per second square. And at the point 30 meters above that, which is at that particular point, it might turn to 4. At that maximum height, which is 30, V is equal to 0. And substituting it in this equation, we end up with this answer. So that is the speed at which the object would have been projected from, or the object was projected from a particular point moving upwards. Continuation of the question. The time taken for this height is gotten from V equals to this. As we see, V equals to U plus GT. And at maximum height, U equals to zero. If we substitute all of that, then the time to reach that particular height of 30 meters is equal to 2.5 seconds. Exercise three. A cricket ball is thrown vertically upward with an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. Find its velocity after three seconds its maximum height attained and the time taken to attain it, the total time for the ball to return to the ground again, and we neglect air resistance. We shall see the effect of air resistance in our subsequent lessons. So if we have, if we have read this carefully, then we have something like this, using V equals to U plus 80, as we have seen in our equations, u equals 40 meters per second the object is projected vertically upward g is minus 9.8 meters per second t is equal to three seconds and if we substitute it inside here then v gives us 10.0 meters per second at maximum height we know v is equal to zero and we use this equation sorry i have used S in this situation to represent height, but we have been using H, but that should not be a problem. It's just a matter of using different letters. Response three, we continue. B Roman two, the time to reach a maximum height. We see that V is equal to U plus that, and at maximum height, this is equal to zero. If we substitute that, then we can end up having that which is the time it took for the object to reach its maximum height. And C, from H equal to U, T plus half G, T square, when ball returns to, when the ball returns, it comes back to the original position where it was projected or sent up, the total displacement is equal to zero because the velocities cancels out. And when the total displacement is equal to zero, we substitute zero here, which is here, equal to 40, which is the initial speed times the time minus half in bracket 9.8, all of that. And if we solve that simultaneous, that uh, quadratic equation or a simple quadratic equation there, we are going to have something like this. So we factor out T and we have this. So T equals zero and T equal to 8.16 seconds. 
And as a physics student, you should not just calculate that, but you should understand the meaning of that. It means that it's like t equal to zero is the time the cricket ball was thrown up. And after some time, after 8.16 seconds, it came back to the same position. So it's like you leave your house at 7 a.m. in the morning, you go to school, and after some time spent in school, you come back home maybe at 10 o'clock, meaning that you have, you have taken a time of three hours to cover maybe for that particular, but at the end of the day, you still came back to the house. So the velocity is cancelled out since uh, displacement is a vector quantity. Now we look at our experiment to determine acceleration due to gravity. It is clear that we have a height. The height here, we have the diagram clearly indicated there. We have electromagnet, a trap door, and then a switch that we can switch between one and two. We look at the procedure directly. A metal rule is used to measure the height S from the ball to the trap door, as we see there. When switch one is off, the ball is released. When switch one is off, it comes automatically to this switch. It connects this other switch here so that the stopwatch immediately, this ball starts falling. The the, the whole process is very is somehow very automatic in a way that immediately the ball starts falling here, the timer begins automatically. So when a switch one is off, the ball is released and it starts to fall. The electric timer starts the timing automatically, immediately the ball is released. When the ball strikes the trap door, the timer circuit is disconnected at P, and the timer records the time for the 4T. And the results we see it always given as this. So you get the height is varied and corresponding values of T gotten. So we see the different heights and the T's and then we can square that. The object is released from rest. If we use this our equation, since the objects at each point in time or each experiment, you release it from a point up, the final, the initial velocity is always considered to be zero, as we have seen in our previous lesson. So substituting zero into this, we come out with this final expression or the final equation there. A graph of S on the vertical or the Y axis against T squared on the X or the horizontal axis is plotted and it gives us a straight line passing through the origin with slope equal to one all over 2 multiplied by g, which is that. And from there, we can get the slope. Since the slope is equal to uh, 1 all over or half g, g will be equal to 2 times the slope. And the precautions we have here should be this. Each set of experiment is repeated. You can always repeat it and try to get two different heights and find the average. If you were running that experiment practically in the lab, you are expected to get two values of the height and then you try to get the average so that you minimize errors. Sometimes you don't use a very large object because if you use a very large object in a medium or maybe in a medium made or maybe in a medium made of air, for example, that large object might tend to provide very high air resistance that will oppose the object from moving the way it usually was supposed to move. So, as a summary, we have seen that equations of motion of objects falling under gravity can be given as these three equations. And for upward motion, G is negative. And for downward motion, G is always positive, and we consider the Earth as our reference point. Now, we have an assignment. A stone is thrown vertically upward with an initial speed U. It reaches a maximum height and returns to the ground. 
find an expression for a the height the maximum height of this stone b the velocity on hitting the ground question 2 in an attempt to determine the value of the acceleration due to gravity by method of free fall an upper 6 student decided to record the time taken for a metal ball to fall from different heights. Please don't be worried that we use an upper C student. You can still use yourself as a lower C student since we are working with lower seats. He recorded the result as seen on the table below. So this is a, these are the different distances he dropped those objects from. And if you look at it very well, 0 0.3, he did not start from a zero distance. He did not start from 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. He used something a little bit higher. I will not go further with this because that will be part of the question that you are supposed to answer. So the time taken was given as seen here. Assignment, use the, da the data to plot a suitable graph that can be used to determine the value of G. B, determine the slope of the graph and hence calculate the value of G. And finally, state one other precaution he used apart from the two cited in the notes. So you have to give other precautions apart from the one, even though we are just asking for one here, you could cite many so that you try to see, you can do research and get many to see your level of understanding. Thank you. This is the end of our lesson and our lesson of the next class will be projectile motion.